Good evening, this is Ashley Travis. I am the 4-H educator in Washington County and I also serve as the Maryland State 4-H Dog Project co-leader. Our other co-leader is Chris Anderson who is our State 4-H Animal Science Specialist. So this evening we thought we would do a little overview of the dog project. We're going to talk about some of the things that you can do with your dog, options if you don't have a dog, and other knowledge events that you can participate in. If you have any questions from this presentation, please feel free to email me and my email contact information will be on the last slide. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. First, we're going to start with some frequently asked questions that I tend to get about the dog project. So the first question is, do I have to own a dog to carry the dog project? And the simple answer is no. There are many opportunities to participate in other events like knowledge events that don't require you to own a dog. There are also lease options if you don't want to purchase a dog or if you can't have a dog. Another question we typically get is our family only owns one dog and we have two 4-H members who would like to show dogs. That is certainly not a problem. The same dog may be shown by up to two members in separate events and we'll talk about what an event is. And the same dog cannot be shown in the same event by more than one member. And these rules also apply for dogs that are done through the leasing program. Another question I tend to get is, I know an AKC confirmation sh shows dogs cannot be spayed or neutered. Does the same apply for 4-H? Uh, we do not follow that rule, so all dogs can be spayed or neutered and still compete in all of our 4-H events. And probably the most frequently asked question I get is, my dog is not purebred or is not registered. Can I still show it in 4-H? And that answer is yes. So we welcome all dogs that can be trained and shown in 4-H, um, and we allow any dog regardless of breed or registration. So we're just going to do a quick overview of some of the events like I mentioned before. So these are some of the things that you can do with your dog or if you're going to lease a dog. So the first is obedience, and that is where you train your dog to perform specific commands that make your dog more socially acceptable and welcomed by others. The next that we're gonna cover is rally. So that is a teamwork event in which the dog and handler navigate a course that has 10 to 20 different signs. Each sign provides instructions regarding the next skill that should be performed. Then we have fitting and showing. So that is a demonstration of teamwork between the dog and the handler. So the handler in this case would be the 4-H member. And judging is based on the handler's ability to exhibit the dog and on the grooming of the dog. And that very similarly follows a confirmation show in the way that the ring is ran or a junior showmanship if you're familiar with AKC. And agility, which is a timed obstacle course. So not all fairs and ag expos have agility. Um, we do provide demonstrations uh, for that event at the Maryland State Fair. But uh, just look into your own fair in your own county because not every county offers agility. So I went ahead and pulled some pictures. So if you are somewhat familiar with the dog sports, um, this might help to jog your memory. So this is obedience. So as we talked about, that is where the dog is trained to do um, very specific commands. The intention is that it makes the dog more sociable and appropriate in public. So they teach a lot of things at the novice level, which is the basic level. Um, Sub-novice is the, is the very basic level. They teach things like sit, down, stay, calm, uh, very basic commands and then there are different levels to that event so as the levels increase so does the difficulty of the task. Um, and the picture on the left is a poodle um, that is in one of the higher levels of, of obedience um, that is retrieving a dumbbell over a jump. Then we said that rally was similar to obedience so it has some obedience um, 
things mixed in with it. So as you can see, the sign on the left is what you would follow with your dog. So the signs are all numbered and you walk through the course and you perform um, what is depicted on the sign. So for instance, the one on the left with the Australian Shepherd is a sit and stay. So you would sit your dog, stay your dog, leave your dog, come back, and then you would move on to the next sign. Um, and the gal on the right there with the Labrador Retriever, um, you can see she's working through a rally event as well. A lot of our 4-H'ers really like rally. There's several different levels of difficulty to the rally event, um, and it's a lot of fun to do with your dog. Next is fitting and showing, and I said that's run similar to a AKC show, a confirmation show, or if you've ever watched Junior Showmanship, uh, that is what this is equivalent to. If you show other species, you may call it fitting and showing. Um, basically, the child or the 4-H member is judged on how they present their dog, so how they show the dog, how they groom the dog, um, and this is done by age division. And then finally, agility, which is a timed, timed obstacle course. Um, a lot of our members really enjoy doing, doing agility. Even if your fair doesn't offer agility, um, you certainly can still train your dog in agility uh, and, and then come to the state fair for the, the agility demonstration. So um, as I said before, you don't need to own a dog in order to participate in the dog project. So there are two dog knowledge events that don't require you to own a dog. So the first is dog bowl, and that is a quiz bowl contest that tests the knowledge of dogs and dog related information. And that's typically held in October or November of each year. Uh, we did, I did write here that it is a team quiz bowl contest. However, you can compete as an individual. So if you are one of the only people that comes from your county to the state contest, that's okay. We will make a team of mixed counties so that everybody can participate. And basically that's a little bit similar to Jeopardy. Uh, so we ask questions based off of a resource list. So we have a list of study materials that you would read and study from. And then it's um, very similar to, uh, to Jeopardy, except it's all dog questions. Um, and a lot of our members have a lot of fun with that. One of our newer contests that we just started a few years ago, which is held in February of each year, is the Dog Skillathon. So Skillathon is a little bit different than Dog Bowl. So in Skillathon, it is an individual contest. So you would compete by yourself and you are tested on your dog knowledge through a series of learning stations. So for example, uh, some of the stations in the Dog Skillathon contest are you have to identify 10 breeds of dogs um, based off of their picture. You would have to identify 10 pieces of dog equipment um, and so on and so forth. So I did wanna talk just a little bit briefly here about leasing a dog. So if you don't own a dog, but you would like to work with, care for, or show a dog, then the leasing program is for you. So leases, uh, you are typically paired up with somebody that owns the dog. Um, it could be your neighbor that's gonna let you borrow their dog. It could be a breeder that might have extra dogs that you can use. And there's different forms of leasing. Um, typically, uh, because um, the nature of the lease program is that you wouldn't actually bring the dog into your home and keep it for long term, um, but you would go and work with it or maybe they would meet you at a training center uh, once or twice a week and you would work with the dog. Um, different people who lease dogs uh, have different standards for what they require if you lease a dog from them. So that would definitely be something you would have to work out with the person that you're leasing the dog from. You are still required to keep appropriate 4-H project records, so you would still have to complete the dog project form uh, in your record book if your county requires that. 4-Hers uh, with leased dogs are required to follow the same requirements for exhibiting as 4-Hers with owned animals, and you can find uh, the, the guidelines and the rules and regulations for exhibiting your dog through your local county fair or uh, the state fair, uh, had, they have their own set of rules and regulations as well. 
And more information on the dog leasing program is available on the University of Maryland Extension Maryland page. It is under the 4-H Performance Animal Lease Program Guidelines. And certainly if you have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to myself um, and we can help you get those answered. So here's just a couple of deadlines to keep in mind if you want to enroll in the dog project. You wanna check with your county for specific enrollment dates. Um, ours here in Washington County is May 1st in order to show at our Ag Expo and Fair. Dog cards are due to your county office by June 1st of each year. Your county may have an earlier deadline, so keep yourself posted on that. Dog leases are typically due to the county extension offices by June 1st. And again, uh, check with your individual county because they may have an earlier deadline. Then you also wanna follow your county schedule for if you're going to show at your local fair or any of the spring shows. Um, this year, our spring shows, most of them have uh, been canceled or postponed at this point, um, but kind of keep your ears open. And then Maryland State Fair entries are due in July. And I did just wanna mention something here about Maryland State Fair. If you've shown other species of animals at Maryland State Fair, you know that you just enter whatever you're going to take. Dogs are a little bit different in that you have to qualify to show at the State Fair. So typically you will have to go to another 4-H show before the entry deadline for Maryland State Fair. So there are lots of regional shows around where you can show your dog to qualify for state fair. If you have an early fair, maybe in the first part of July, uh, you can also qualify at your county fair as well. Um, and I would reach out to your county dog person or your 4-H educator uh, and try to figure out where would be the nearest qualifying show if you would like to show at Maryland State Fair. Agility demonstrations at State Fair you do not have to qualify for, so we usually put out an announcement uh, when we're accepting demonstration applications for State Fair's agility demos. So that is what I have this evening. Um, just a very brief overview of the dog project, but I wanted to let everybody know all of the different things that you can do with your dog. I also want to put a plug in that AKC right now is doing virtual trick dog demonstrations. You can go to akc.org and look that up. Uh, that is where you, again, it's several levels, just like most of our 4-H events are. Uh, you would start with the trick dog novice title, and your dog has to do 10 tricks you film it and then you would send it to an AKC evaluator um, and your dog can actually become a trick dog novice. So something really fun that you can do with your dog right now. The novice level is super simple. It literally took me a week to train my dog um, to do the novice tricks, the 10 novice tricks. So I would encourage you to do that. It's definitely something fun. And as always, here is my contact information. If you have any questions about the dog project, or anything that I covered this evening, uh, please send me an email. Um, email is best. That is our county office number, which will get you to somebody during normal business hours. But it, at this time, it's easier if you were to just email me. So I hope everybody is staying safe and healthy. And thank you for listening this evening.